Hello and welcome to Rain's Kitchen and Garden. My name is Rain. I'm in the kitchen today, my friends. I'm baking a very easy and delicious cauliflower and cheese quiche. Why don't you join me? All right, let's make some quiche. Now, the first thing we're going to do is roll out our pie crust. This is the pie plate I'm using today. I like this one because it has a removable bottom, which makes it really easy when you're pulling the quiche or the pie out of the plate. And I have some pie dough here that I made and I will link in the description below where you can find the video on how to make this with the recipe. I'm going to put a little bit of flour down just in case it sticks. You might see little brown spots. That's because I use brown sugar. Gently put that in there. And I'm just going to turn it over the sides. I'm not going to cut the edges of the dough, I'm just going to roll them up. Now I want to show you something. I'm not letting it hang over the edge, all right? Because then it'll cook over the edge and it'll be hard to take out of the pie plate. But I am pushing it up against the edge. It's going to shrink during the baking process. But I just wanted to make sure that it didn't, it wasn't too low. Because when we put our quiche filling in, it's going to rise up to the top here. Okay, that's all ready to go here. Now it's time to blind bake the pie crust. I'm going to show you a little clip from my video on blind baking your pie crust just to show you how I do it. I like to blind bake my pie crust because it helps with the sogginess on the bottom of the pie or the quiche. Blind baking just means you're baking it before you put the fillings in. So the first thing you want to do is with a clean pie plate, whichever, whichever one you're using, you want to measure out some foil. And I have two pieces of foil here. You want to measure it so that the foil goes over the top over the sides of the top of the pan, and I'll show you why in a minute. You want to do it gently so you don't rip the foil. Okay, so now we have the foil formed inside the pan. We can remove that, put it aside. And we're going to put our pie dough into our pie plate now. So I've put my pastry dough or my pie dough into my plate. I'm just going to poke a few holes into the bottom with a fork. And now we'll put our foil on. Now that's why we prepared it in advance, so that it was ready to go in and it doesn't, you know, mess with the dough too much. It's already formed. Now 
Now we have to weigh down the uh, dough so it doesn't puff up. As you can see here, I have something here called pie weights. Now, this is nothing fancy, my friends. These are dried peas. I've had these dried peas for probably 12 years now. <laughs> Don't throw them out after because you can reuse them over and over for your pie weights. Now that's going to go into a preheated oven. I've preheated my oven to 425 Fahrenheit. That's 220 Celsius or 7 gas mark. And this is going to go in for 15 minutes. While my pie crust is blind baking, I decided to prepare my other ingredients. I have a small head of cauliflower here that I've steamed for five minutes. I let it drain really, really well, and then I cut it into these tiny little pieces here, okay? You want to make sure that you drain your cauliflower very well because you don't want to have that extra moisture on the bottom of your quiche because that will add to the soggy bottom <laughs> of the pie crust. So if anyone wants to know, this measures 455 grams. So I'm setting that aside for now. And in a small bowl, I'm gonna prepare my other ingredients. I've got two large eggs and a half a cup of whole milk. That's 125 mils. And this is optional. I've got a couple of pinches of salt here. Now, depending on the cheese that you use, you may or may not need salt. If you use a cheddar cheese, you probably don't need salt because that's pretty, um, pretty salty cheese. But I'm using a Jarlsberg cheese today, which isn't very salty, so I've added a little salt to my egg mix. So I'm going to put that aside too. And I also prepared my cheese. I have Jarlsberg cheese here that I shredded up. As you can see, Jarlsberg is a Norwegian cheese and it's got a Swiss flavor to it. It's really, really nice. It's a little sweet too. I have two cups of shredded Jarlsberg cheese. That's 210 grams. And as I mentioned, you can use cheddar, you can use regular Swiss cheese, Fontina, any kind of cheese you want. The formula for making a quiche is very simple. You need a pie crust, you need two eggs, you need a half a cup of milk, you need two cups of shredded cheese, the cheese of your choice, and the vegetable of your choice. And I have made so many varieties of quiche. I've used lots of different cheeses. I made an asparagus and cheddar cheese quiche. That was really, really good. I made a ham and potato and fontina cheese quiche. That was super good too. I made a tomato quiche with cheddar cheese and fresh tomatoes. Very, very good. That was a little wet though because the tomatoes are a little wet. But if you dry up your vegetables, then you can really avoid a soggy bottom quiche also if you blind bake it. 15 minutes in the oven and my pie crust is blind baked. Now I did let this cool a little bit because I want to be able to take the, um, the pie weights or the peas out to show you. So we're going to carefully, carefully <laughs> pull these out. And as you can see, this is not fully cooked. And that's not what we're looking for. We're blind baking it for 15 minutes just to give it a chance to start cooking. And as I mentioned before, or did I mention it? The crust does shrink a little bit. But that's how you blind bake your pie crust. My pie crust is now blind baked. I pulled it out of the oven and I reduced the oven temperature to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. That's 180 Celsius or gas mark four. So what I'm gonna do is fill my quiche. I've got a little bit of cheese that I'm putting on the bottom. I read a tip somewhere that if you put a layer of cheese on the bottom, it also helps with the sogginess. <laughs> I don't know if that's true or not, but I'm doing it anyway, because it's not gonna hurt either way, right? And now I'm going to scatter the cauliflower into the pie crust. There we go. 
And on top of that, I pour my egg mixture. And next, the best part, the cheese. <laughs> Just put all that cheese on top. Now, you could use less than I used, definitely. I like a lot of cheese. I used to make this with one cup of cheese. But then I realized that I like it more cheesy because the cheese is going to melt into the quiche. It may seem like a lot at first, but... I don't mind if my cheese sort of oozes over the sides. <laughs> Oozy cheese is something, it's a thing of beauty. All right, that's ready for the oven. So that's going into my preheated oven for 45 minutes until the top is browned. Look at this beautiful quiche. Look at it, oh my God, it smells so good too. The crust is nice and brown and we have just a little bit of brown on top of the cheese. It's, oh my gosh, I can't wait to dig into this. I <laughs> wanna show you how easy it is to remove the quiche from the pan. Look, you just basically raise it like that. I love these pans that have the um, removable bottom on them. To remove the quiche from that bottom piece there, you just take your little pancake lifter and just go around. Make sure nothing's sticking. And you can just slide it off. Just like that. Let's cut a slice of this quiche and see how it looks inside. Now, my friends, I have to warn you, I am notoriously bad at cutting pie <laughs> and, and cake and all that stuff. I'm not good at it, but I'll try my best for you guys. Oh, wow. Let's see, did I cut it all the way through? I did, look at that. I'll show you a close up, hold on. I think this turned out amazingly. It smells so good and I already know it tastes good because I've made this so many times. I'm trying to grow my own cauliflower this year. Last year, the wild turkeys came into my garden and ate all my seeds. But if you follow my channel, you know that I built a whole bunch of grow lights in my basement, grow light stands, and I'm starting my garden early in the basement this year in hopes that the critters won't get to my seeds. <laughs> but what I did last summer was when cauliflower went on sale in the fall, when it was really, really a good price, I bought up like 12 heads of cauliflower, cut them all up, blanched them, and put them in my freezer so I had cauliflower for the entire winter season. That's another little tip for you. If you enjoyed this video, my friends, please like and subscribe and don't forget to leave me a comment. I do love reading your comments and I always reply to them. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time on Rain's Kitchen and Garden. Bye!